Are you are you not talking to me because you're busy with the dog? Oh my god. Well, it's real talk and it's this is my life. This is how it goes down in my house. This dog. I don't even know if you can hear me because all he's doing is being ridiculous. It's after seven, so you're now live in my Facebook group. Oh my god, you two. Oh, sweet Jesus. This is my life. Yeah. Um, you're the one who started it. Oh, Lord, he's so old. These two are ridiculous. And they both love it. One acts like he's old. And he's not. Yeah, that'd be you. Not the dog. <laughs> not the dog. That dog is younger than what they told us. Oh, I have my own pain, sir. Okay, well, we're done here. So, um, yeah, I was completely unprepared for real talk tonight, but I'm like, well, we'll do it anyways. And so we're doing it when I'm walking around my house because I have something in the oven right now. And I don't think it's going to be done in the seven minutes that it says it is. And it's super loud because the dog and my husband are still playing. Oh, and I'm going to make uh, muffins yet tonight. And instead of blueberries, I have to use strawberries because I don't have any blueberries. But it's fine. Hey. <laughs> Hang on one second. <sighs> okay, or not, he's not going to hear me. Hey, when this the timer goes off, will you take them out of the oven? It's like seven minutes. Down the basement. Um, I'm live in my Facebook group right now. It is past seven o'clock on a Sunday. Okay, well, did you want to be live with me? Well, it's too late because we're back into the living room with these two ridiculous men. Are you going to take the peppers out of the oven? Like five to seven. Okay. okay. Jesus. I have things to do. What really? What do you have to do? Are you coming in the basement? Oh God Almighty! Okay. Well, he's got things to do, and so do I. Um. Okay. So now I'm gonna go down the basement. Oh, by the way, this is my lovely wallpaper in that green. The window that we have to have plastic on because otherwise it leaks. This is my, this is like kind of, oh, there's a fridge over there. And then there's also one behind me because who doesn't need two refrigerators in one room? Yeah, that still hasn't changed. So, okay, let me go in the basement. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the office. I'm so excited. You guys have no idea. Okay, I'm going to flip you around again. Ooh, okay. It's not done, done. Hang on. There. Light. We have light. So we have to have the electricians come back. And there's a really bad echo in this room. Oh, God. I hate the echo. So he's been mudding and um, he taped it off. He just went and bought some primer, actually, um, so he can prime it. But, you know, some of the lights aren't even in. We have two lights um, and they're not actually in correctly. Oh, I see what he did here. It looks like he spilt his coffee all over too. So we have a water shut off there for the outside. And the inspector said we had to have a valve. So, so I don't, this is gonna be the closet. I bought a curtain rod because of the way the closet is. And this is actually a steel beam with the tape on it. You cannot, it's the main support for our house. So you can't really put a door on there because he had to glue some wood behind it just to keep the drywall on but then there's
this random mess on my floor. He spilled something and just left it there because the dogs don't come down here, so he can't use that story. Anyways, I'm excited. I'm excited for it to be done um, because, well, because, because it's my space. And I gotta turn lights on again. They're still up there being ridiculous. And I went out of the house today with my faux hawk. Oh, there we go. With my faux hawk and the wind. I mean, we're still doing pretty okay. But I did, um, I did put some shit in there to hold it up because obviously when you have hair like mine, that's super short, you have to. I also am going to have to plug in my phone because otherwise it's going to die. Oh, the joys of being completely unprepared. But it's a full moon and I just wanted to talk about it. So that's the reason I decided to go live. Because of the full moon. And I'm sorry that I'm just like throwing you all over. And now, now I have to try and get my um, phone case off. Which is going to be a really fun time while you're actually on the phone with me. But you know, it's things could be worse. Hang on. Let's see how to do this. Hi, how are you guys all doing in my phone? Oh, see, and then I interrupted my feed. That's great, isn't it? That's so great. I don't even know what you're going to see behind me. I wish I could sit over there. I'm not prepared to sit over there. Oh, Jesus, and that's the volume. Okay. Oh, there we go. Some semblance of normalcy. And, okay. Okay. There, I'm nice and bright. Oh, there's the comments. God, I love how Facebook is so stupid sometimes. Okay. So today is a full moon. And, um... So I don't know a lot about like full moon rituals. I don't do a ton of full moon rituals just because I don't, I'm not that girl. You know, I really wish I could say I was that girl sometimes, but then I'm like, you got to kind of own who you are. So owning who I am means that I don't do that. However, God, I look oily. The hell? Anyways, uh, the thing that I did learn from my shaman about the full moon is it's very powerful. And if you want to set intentions of like, um, you know, like you would any day, like you would say, you know, I'm getting rid of, you know, these hurt feelings or whatever, or, um, people do like where you write everything down on a piece of paper, things that you're getting rid of, you recite them out loud, burn the paper under a full moon, that sort of thing. Like, I don't really do any of that. I mean, I don't have to on a normal basis anyways, but I can tell you, when I, when my husband and I were moving, we had been looking for a house. I think by the time we ended up moving, we were looking for a house for nine months. So just imagine how many homes you see in nine, in nine months. Oh my God. We had looked at so many homes. And then because when we moved, um, the market had skyrocketed much like it's still, it's honestly terrible for buyers right now. Um, because the, the, the houses are going off the market so fast, you can't find one. So, but what I did was my, my shaman told me to do, she said, write down exactly what you want. You have to be very detailed, very specific, write down what you want. And then you recite it under a full moon, every full moon. Like, um, I think I did like three or four. So it was another, from the time I talked with her, it was like another three to four months before we actually found the home. And I thought it was crazy. I thought it was like, this is the stupidest thing ever. But I can tell you that when we, when we found the house that we live in now, I have everything that I asked for. Well, actually that both of I, both of us had asked for, um, except for a master bath. Not bad. I will take it. So I wanted a two-car garage. I wanted a ranch. Well, Miguel wanted a ranch too. And I wanted my garage to be attached. I wanted a fireplace and I wanted a master bedroom. Um, we have a master bedroom, technically. Our bedroom is humongous, but it doesn't have a bathroom in it. Um, there is probably, 
you could probably put a bathroom in our bedroom because it's so big. But then what you do then is you shrink the actual bedroom. So then you'd end up with just like a 10 by 10 or maybe like a 10 by 12 room um, with then a small bathroom because you can't put a full bathroom in. And actually, I think we we were talking about it at one point, um, but the way that our furnace is in this house, I think we'd end up having to move the furnace if we wanted to put in a bathroom. So it's, it's a whole lot of black, so we're not doing it. I'm again, I'm just so excited for this stupid office to be done. Um, let's see. So I, um, I, as you know, had the supervisor interview on Friday. We still don't know anything. I don't know when they're going to make a, a decision. Um, it was just all I know is soon, which to different people, that means something completely different. Um, I'm glad it's over. I was surprised at the questions. They were pretty intense, I thought. Um, but a lot of that, you know, whenever you do an interview for whatever job, it's, let's just be real. Like I was like, kind of like, ooh, I was like anxious. I was nervous. So I'm sure some of that was in the play mix there, but. Um, and then Friday night I did a group reading and I know one of those people is now in the group. I don't know if she's watching though. Um, and it was great. Great group of ladies. Um, I don't know exactly what they were expecting from me. I just, sometimes I laugh because I think it was a little bit more than what they thought it was going to be. And what the, the lady that scheduled it with me, um, she's just like, I just want something light you know, like some kind of palm readings, maybe no more than 15 minutes per person. So there ended up being nine ladies and I was there for three hours. And we honestly, I had a blast. It was great. I, I mean, that could probably be friends with all of them. <laughs> like a lot of them. Um, well, one of them specifically, we have the same kind of energy. So like I would totally be fine, you know, like hanging out with her. So it was really fun. It was something that I knew would be bigger than them, what they expected because Spirit told me already when that meeting was scheduled. Hi, Tana. Um, so when the lady scheduled the meeting and she was saying how I, ha I had said to her, I said, I think somebody's coming with a very serious question and I'm not sure she wants to ask that question in front of everybody. And she's like, oh no, we just want it to be light, you know, and they were just looking for psychic readings, which is fine. Um, but Spirit had already told me that it was just going to be something bigger than that. That the whole point of that particular reading for them was to prove that people have the ability that I do. And I don't, I don't set out to prove anything to anyone. You ask for a reading, it's a service that I provide, so I just do the reading for you. So, hi Holly. Uh, <clears throat> so... Um, to say that they were surprised was probably an understatement. Um, and I had asked that they each just come with one to two questions, like prepared questions, because that's just the easiest way for me. Um, you know, I don't read cards. I don't read palms. I'm not, I don't, that's an ability I don't have. Uh, I can still give you an answer to your question. I can still tell you what kind of person you are. I can still tap into energies of people that live here in the physical world, um, and also those that are departed. It just, I think it was more than just proving it to the ladies that I, I can do, I guess what they, they thought maybe couldn't be done and that people like me exist or proving to myself, <laughs> proving to myself that, um, I'm a little bit more gifted than I give myself credit for. Because much like anything, we're all our own worst critics, right? Like your negative self-talk and, and trying to change that about yourself all the time. My, my gift and my abilities, I don't think they all came on board at the same time. Um, I probably mm, rationalized my psychic abilities away. A lot of the time, a lot, a lot of people do that. That's what I've learned doing psychic readings is that we all have 
what we call gut feelings. All of that is, is you picking up on energy. That is you feeling energy and making a decision about it. You don't hang around with people you don't like. Why do you think that is? It's because you can feel their energy. You sense that you don't like something about them. Maybe you've never even met them before, but you're just like, ooh, I don't like that person. Or I'm just going to go over here. It's, we just, we tend to rationalize so much of it away. So um, I think I've had that for a very long time, obviously. I feel like I was born with the gifts that I have. Um, I just feel like I, you know, obviously as a child, it's very different and life is very different. Um, but as an adult, knowing what I know now, I feel like I've, I've probably had that. I just didn't recognize it. I mean, I, when I first opened up spiritually, I was describing a man I had been seeing for years and I didn't even realize that's what was happening. This man didn't exist in the physical sense, but I, he had been around for so long that he was just part of my normal day and I didn't realize it. Isn't that crazy? That's absolutely insane. You just start describing somebody that you can see in your house and the person you're talking to is like, um, excuse me? And I'm like, what? You Like, I literally didn't even recognize what I was doing because it was my normal. It's kind of like... um. I had explained to the ladies that my grandpa was Native American and he could find water with a witch hazel stick. The fuck? I can't, right? Like, pfft, I tried. Oh my God, my grandpa's, his fingers would be turning white and he'd be holding that so hard and the stick would just be bending. And what I said to them was, I thought everybody's grandpa could do that because mine could. Because that was my reality. So sometimes we're just how do you want to say it? Like you're conditioned to believe certain things about the world based on how you grew up. So blessed are those who grow up in a world of spirituality if they have gifts, because for those of us who were raised not that way, um, and when you first open up and your family thinks you're fucking nuts and everybody around you is criticizing you and things like that, it's, it's hard. So it makes sense to me when you speak at <clears throat> events or, or go to readings like I did and you find out that there's people in that room that have gifts and are terrified about anything about them because we've been taught fear. We've been taught that that doesn't exist, that that's evil, that, you know, that's dark side kind of stuff. And listen... I'm not going to act like the dark side or some kind of evil force uh, in the spiritual world doesn't exist because I feel like that exists everywhere. You just simply have to make a choice. Are you going to allow it to control you and your abilities or are you going to say, we don't allow that here? It's kind of like letting weird people into your house. It's, uh, it's kind of like your mind is your spiritual house. So you just got to own the door and, and kind of take it for what it is. Anyways, I could talk all day. I could talk all day about my gifts. <laughs> uh, but anyways, it was a good time. Nonetheless, I'm excited. I have more readings scheduled. In fact, I was just telling my daughter that this year, and it's only the end of March, I have probably scheduled more readings than I did all of last year. Because I work a full-time job, so it's different for me. Um... I don't do readings full time. Uh, but then what I do is I second guess myself and I'm like, oh, I'm going to schedule myself off because that like doing too many in a row, that's just, and it scares me. That's my truth. Sometimes my truth really sucks. Um, <laughs> Lord, so there was a situation today, interestingly enough. We were talking about my ex-husband, my daughter and I. Setting boundaries is good in physical, emotional, and spiritual realms. You're a thousand percent correct, Holly. I agree with you. Um, it's like it's like necessary. Like you have to. There's no other option. Because I just just don't tolerate any bullshit, regardless of where it's coming from. That's the way I look at life. Um, but anyways, today Erica and I were talking about my ex-husband, who's her father. And he was abusive. He's part of my story, obviously. 
Um, and we were talking about like memories and healing. And I said to her, I don't believe that healing ever actually ends here because you get through a certain, a certain part of your life or your past and all of a sudden you have like another memory that you may be suppressed or, you know, that other, the thing that you just worked through was always at the forefront, something you were trying not to think about because it's so tragic and ugly and gross or whatever word you want to put on it. And then you get through that and then all of a sudden you're just hit with something else. And, oh, it's so, I don't know, like just when you think you're fucking over it. I'm not over it. Nope, I'm not over it. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh. I lived through some like really horrible things. <sighs> and there's that part of my mind that is telling me that, you know, because I believe that everything happens for a reason, but there's that part of my mind that's telling me like, you chose it. Yeah, on some level I did, but oh my God, I didn't deserve it. And I think that's where my, um, my disconnect is. <sighs> I, tell, I tell people, listen, I'm not a victim. I am not a victim. I I am healing myself every fucking day because I am a survivor. I am a domestic abuse survivor and that's where I'm going. I need to process through some of the things that happened to me because the crazy part about living through abuse is you don't you don't know how bad it was. You get so used to using reverse psychology and trying to keep yourself safe that you don't really realize how bad it was until you talk to somebody else. And you say those things out loud. <laughs> I don't think I've ever told anybody what I told her today. I don't know that I've ever said it out loud because I feel like I can't breathe right now. I I don't think I've said it because um <laughs> because I feel like a fucking mess. It was one day, it was one event, but the feelings <sighs> the feelings are still like it's kind of like when all this stuff started with Miguel and I in that night in December when he was so drunk and I was just in a full-blown panic. Even though I was safe, my brain was telling me I wasn't because of everything I've lived through. So it kind of feels like that. Like, it's just, oh God. So I have this beautiful gift, right? This beautiful gift and I'm just a normal person. <laughs> like I'm just a normal person who's been through a lot of fucking shit to get where she's at right now. And I will build people up like there's no tomorrow because I need it. You need it. We all collectively need it. I literally said that on Friday. <laughs> because you just, we can do so much better. We have to be better. We have to love ourselves more because oh, just, I was never taught to love myself. And I just, um, I want people to know that it's okay. And the best thing you can do is love yourself so that you don't, make those choices again and choosing yourself is fucking hard. I've told you guys that since I started all this in October to consistently choose yourself over and over and sit in this toxic pain 
to process those emotions and to work that out. So I'm sure that another memory <laughs> will smack me in my face, but you have to feel it to process it. You can't keep ignoring it. You can't eat it away. You can't drink it away. You can't have sex with a hundred people to get rid of all of this stored crap. You have to feel it and work through it. Move it through your body so it, it stops coming up. I just, I know too many women who do everything I just said. My addiction is food. Um, I know a lot of people that drink and way too much because that's how they numb the pain so they don't have to feel it. Or the ones that go from relationship to relationship, if they even really are relationships or if they're just fuck buddies for lack of a better word, because they're just trying to forget the last guy or the last relationships or the last female, it doesn't matter the sex. It just, we're so busy numbing the pain that we're never processing it. And I, for me, that's how it works. I'm not going to tell you that you need to do that. Um, and I tell, I tell people that during readings too, like, this is what I believe. And my belief system has completely changed um, since I started being able to talk with spirit and I've said that before too. Um, but I don't, I don't expect people to believe what I believe. I'm not telling you that you need to process things the way that I process them. There are many therapists that can help you work through things. There are friends that can just sit with you while you cry it out. Like you just do whatever works for you is what I'm saying. Good grief. So much more of my story has to be written yet. And it just, like, I could probably write, like, like three books just up to this point in my life about all of the crazy stuff that I've gone through and all of the choices that I've made for one reason or another. Um, even once now, I have chosen, like, I have a friend who is struggling with money. And I've been there. I I have lived off of public assistance and thank God I had a grandma that had money when my car would break down or whatever because I couldn't afford to fix it myself. Um, and I have been in a job now for over 20 years that I haven't always liked. But I chose my hard and my hard was keeping the job that I don't always like because I refused to live in poverty again because that was worse. So I don't know many people that absolutely love the job that they do or that they have never had a hard time in that job. Um, but that's the best comparison. Like those are some of the choices. Like you pick one thing over another. And for me, that's what it was. Like that was the most recent example. But choosing to stay in my marriage, knowing that we have significant problems in which need to hmm, like work through or resolve that probably will never be resolved because staying here gives me choosing myself. It gives me that lesson that I didn't learn the first time around because I was too scared. Because like I said, choosing yourself is hard. Owning your truth and who you are and why you do the things that you do is not always pretty, but it's just so ultimately worth it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. To be able to say that, like that I love myself. I love myself now more than I ever have in my whole life and I'm gonna be 46 years old. <laughs> but you know what? I got the chance to figure it out. Not everybody gets that chance. So if you get the chance, figure it out. Try your damnedest. Read some self-help books. Le read, listen to podcasts. Meditate. Do something. Because, God damn it, we're worth it. All of us. Anyone watching this video right now, we are all fucking worth it. We're all worthy of love. We're all worthy of happiness. Reaching goals. Anything is possible. So anyways. 
Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta cry it out, man. I would have apologized for this. If you look back to some of those first, <laughs> those first lives that I did, I was constantly apologizing for being exactly who I am. And now I'm just not, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry that I get emotional because something fucking hurts or my life is a mess or whatever it is. I just, it is what it is. And I think that if I were to tell one of you to do a live about your life, that I might just see the same thing. And it's okay. Everybody's learning curve is different. Right? I mean, I've been married. <laughs> I got married to my ex-husband. What? Who does that? Oh, crazy people. That's who does that. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, my God. And it's not because I don't love him because I do. I'm just being honest. I mean, I probably will forever have love for him even if we weren't together. I've, I've spent half of my life with this man. Dang near half of my life, it feels like. I'm trying to think. When I met him, I was 21. So. Um, oh, my God. I have all of these. I have all these, like. Um, grief and healing is in layers and rarely linear. No, I think I've said that before, Holly. Um, I'll take the hugs, Tana. The more work, the deeper work, the harder the work. Yes, Mary, I agree. No, I didn't deserve it, Anne. No one deserves mistreatment, but it does create healers. Damn, Holly, that's some deep shit. I think you're right about that. And, um, yeah, Wendy and Anne, I saw you yesterday. You know I'm not crazy. Not all the time. And um, Wendy was just singing her little heart out yesterday because that's authentic truth. That is your authentic self. And I love that about you. Anyways, yeah, we were in the middle of the store. Wendy's just singing along with whatever music they had. <laughs> oh, it's funny, but it's so great at the same time. Anyways, I'm going to go for the evening. It's 7.34. Um, until next week. If I make any changes to my... Um, scheduling this weekend because I mean I have some things I need to do um but if I open up any more times I'm I think I have a I have a I have a reading on Saturday and I always have Saturday times um, available I have I it was Monday Friday Saturday and I just changed it to Thursday Friday Saturday because it's easier for me to do do it back to back like day by day to day like that because it's just trying to remember that I have to do them on Mondays and Mondays is always the first day of the week and can be really chaotic for me depending on what's going on at work like tomorrow is probably going to be a real chaotic day I just don't ever want to be in a position where my energy is too low and that somebody's getting like not the best for me so um Thursday Friday Saturday times have been opened up I'm debating right now I'm kind of on the fence I feel like I feel like I want to do something for Friday, like, um, like short, like do like 15 minute, um, psychic sessions, and, but I would only be doing it for the people in this group. I might do that. If I do that, I'll post it. I will post by tomorrow in the group. Um, but those sessions would not be available to be scheduled online. You're going to have to schedule them with me because I don't want to open it up. Because if I open up my calendar, it opens it up to anybody to book that online. So I don't want to do that. So I'll let you know. I'll make a post about it. But I think it's coming because I've already been hearing it all day. Which is why I just said it. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's not like I don't get anything out of these readings. You know, it's I get to watch you heal in front of me. It's, it's amazing. It's literally kind of like, I guess the only thing I can compare it to is watching a baby be born. And I've only ever watched one baby be born because I didn't watch my own. I mean, that was kind of difficult and I didn't have a mirror and all that. But I cried for the one that I did watch and I don't even talk to that lady anymore. But it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. 
Um, and it's kind of, I feel the same way about sitting in front of people and doing readings, regardless of the kind of reading. It just is really, it's healing. It's healing not only for you, but for me as well. So I love you guys. Until next week, make good choices.